Hello everybody, welcome to some Hogs of War. It's time to do some practice here on Bridge the Gap. Seeing as the Hogs of War League Season 3 of the Pro League is coming up soon, I am in desperate need of just getting some practice time in, you know? What? Uh... Uh, oh, oh, okay, guys, <laughs> um, what did I just do? Look how beautiful he is. Oh, <laughs> good day, everybody. Pinstripe here. I'm already losing my voice. It is currently 22 minutes past midnight, and it's time for some more to practice because. Season 3 of the Hogs of War Pro League is coming up and I need to get into shape with my gunners. So we have a full team of gunners each on either team and the rule for me is that uh, I cannot move. So I can aim, I can turn and whatnot, but I cannot physically walk forward. So we're going to be practicing some mortars, trying to get in those direct hits. That one's a little bit short but okay to start with. Uh, this year's roster is absolutely jam-packed full of dynamite gems, scary players who I have faced in the past, and overall my record is pretty even. I am, I think, 9 and 8 or something like that in terms of my ELO, so 9 wins, 8 losses overall. I haven't played competitively in the league since Season 1, if you cast your minds back, I made it through to the semi-finals in the playoffs, uh, sadly losing to Caster. The AI going crazy with their mortars as well. 49 on that first hit, and down into the pit goes my dude. Yeah, so I made it to the semis, but sadly knocked out. Uh, but I felt I did pretty well, considering that earlier in that season, in season one, I lost quite heavily to Iron Fox, and then I just absolutely slaughtered him in the playoffs. So it just kind of goes to show the versatility of Hogs. And, uh... Let's see, I don't think I'll overhit this. This one should be in the middle, I think. Okay, just next. What is it? I don't want 39s, I want 49s, goddammit. But of course, with the success of the new format in the league, where we have the pig pool, players choosing from a pool of... Uh, it was 18 pigs, but I think now it is reduced to 17. I think we're removing one scout, I believe... Uh, for season three, uh, but there are plenty of heavy weapons to choose from so it's much more viable For heavies now and they become a lot more important big piece of advice I can probably give for mortars is Know when to use them so you don't want to be risking if you're not like 90% sure on the shot don't take it because uh, If you miss a shot in the league then it uh, can really spell disaster for you so you need to be absolutely sure how much of an angle you're using and then implementing that and hopefully getting at least at least 40 damage you want to be roughly dealing the same amount as the standard bazooka to kind of stay in the game because if you hit consistent uh, mortar shots that miss then you are going to be in trouble of course defensive maps are the most important for heavies and that is why bridge the gap is such a good practice map for mortars you can really kind of gauge the distance, I know that sounds really obvious, but at the end of the day it just kind of gives you a feel for uh, how the landscape kind of comes into play. Because you can see that it's it's not just one big flat surface, it dips in it, bobbles and it weaves and does all kinds of crazy things and the blimp just keeps getting in my way. When will it learn? I don't know. But I think that's just over his head. Yeah, okay. I have this weird superstition, right, where if I am if I know that I'm overshooting a mortar, I will hold back on the uh, directional pad. So the, the direction that the shell is traveling, I'll hold the opposite direction on the directional pad. Am I the only one that does that? Because I feel like when I do that, I feel like I'm actually physically slowing down the momentum of the shell. So I'm like trying to pull it back a bit. If, if any of that makes sense, let me know in the comments, <laughs> because I feel like I'm a bit weird. But I don't know, like mentally, I feel like it, it, it actually works. Like my, my brain over the 20 years that I played this game has convinced myself that that actually works. But whether or not it does, I could not tell you. And that one looks okay, has enough power. 
Drops for 47, get the splash damage. Nope, okay. I'll take the 47 then. Oh, see, that's just a juicy one right there. Just the... If I overhit, it's fine because I hit the gunner in the... I hit Ponson B behind, who has more health. Uh, so what I'm looking at here is obviously using the mini-map in the bottom left in combination with the angle uh, gauge at the, the top right. So I can see that that's maybe just under half power, halfway, I guess, so that it can drop just... Oh, okay, that, that, that's okay. Could have been maybe a bit more central, but I get the splash damage as well. And map reading, as I've said previously, uh, when I've talked about mortars and stuff, is extremely important. Not sure about his angle here, but I'm actually going to lose a pig, would you believe? Because he has taken a ton of damage down there. I hadn't even realised. So the British strike first. And <laughs> he actually got 13 and 10. Would you believe it? Now this is a tricky one. Actually, no. The pig, Percy behind, is quite helpful here because it helps me to... The pig on the higher ground, uh, it actually helps me visually to understand the landscape and the angle needed. So again, using the map, I can see that that's, again, just more than half, but again, should drop. Okay, a little bit too far, but still 42, splash damage of 17 and a kill. So that's one for one, blow for blow, 4v4. Ponson B on 101 health. Grabbing the roller grenades, oh baby. Yeah, as for the rest of my record, I think my ELO is uh, 9 and 8. So 9 wins, 8 losses, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, but that's over all competitive matches, including the exhibition ones that I've had so far. Those ones have been good. Like, they've been good practice, and I've just been ever so slightly short of winning. Like, I've come close against the likes of Machutino, against the likes of ADB... Uh, a lot of mistakes there too, but overall it has been very fun, and I'm just very conscious of the <laughs> blimp above me whilst trying to determine the power. I think that's a bit too much. No, full 50. Dropped in exactly where I wanted, and that is what I was talking about with making sure you are 100% sure of your shot. Because again, taking into account your movement and the amount of time that you have... 30 seconds in this case playing to competitive rules. That is going to be another 50 actually. Oh, 47. Okay. Yeah, taking all those things into account and just thinking, is the mortar the best case and can I get the most out of it in my current position? So just looking at the board, I mean, yeah, I may as well go for the 62 guy. And that might be a bit much actually. Oh, I actually could drop in. Okay, we're on a roll and he's dead. <laughs> we'll take that 70. Blasting him up the wall so he drops back down for the 20 hit. Gets the splash. And it's a 4v3. Eh, man, that might be a bit much, but I don't need it to be direct. I just need it to drop in and deal some splash damage. Yeah, 41. Tis all good. I think that's another tip I can give actually as well. Uh, is that if you don't need to aim... If you, if you don't need to get the max damage, and you just need the splash damage, then just try and get it off quickly and get it roughly in the zone that you need it to be to deal that damage. Because you don't want to be taking so long and, and going direct every single time. Uh, like this guy, for instance. Ponson B is going to throw a roller grenade. Full power! Oh, doesn't get the kill, though. And of course, I can't move from down there, so I have a, a much trickier shot. So I'd honestly pre prefer them to kill... My pig down there, but whatever. I've got to deal some damage on Ponsonby and hope that the blimp doesn't get in the way, but I've got to wait. And I guess that gives me a bit of time to think and just make sure that this drops in. I think I think that's roughly the right angle. I don't want it to be too much. And it should carry... Oh! That's how we do! That... <laughs> And Gorio, where you at? Where you at? Meet me on the battlefield, break. Now that was honest. <laughs> that was honestly uh, just perfect. Honestly, just perfect. So if if I can pull that off <laughs> at any point during the league, it will be very much appreciated. So I think maybe just 
maybe just practicing that a bit because I think discussing it with Angurio, you mentioned that it is very much like the shrapnel grenade and that you've got to kind of aim for a specific part of the body of the pig that you're aiming at and this blimp has been an absolute menace to society. I'm a menace to society. I don't think I'm going to have enough time. Like, oh, maybe it's going to drop short though. Spoiled by the blimp again. Only 32, costly, but at the same time I've got three players alive. I want to do that again, that was that is so satisfying to do. To get all of those pieces of shrapnel to hit at the same time on that initial explosion. Ponsonby was on 101 health. And there's the blimp gone again. Strike two. One each now. And sadly, all out of bazookas. I tell you what, sorry, bazookas, mortars. I'll collect the crate. I'll move and collect the crate so I can keep up my mortar game. And try and go for a crate. Will you just stop it? It's every single time, dude. Just chill the hell out, man. Please. Collect the crate and then try and get the hit. With the help of the blimp again, of course. Could just please leave me alone. That would be wonderful. And just allow me to get this direct hit dead on. I think it's going to be too much, in all honesty. But if I can get the 50 here to finish... No! 33. And 6. So, <laughs> would have been nice to finish on a direct hit. But I feel like I've worried too much about the blimp during this uh, practice... Practice session. And honestly, guys, I would recommend it. If you want to be practicing any weapon, really... Just hop into hogs, and you don't even have to face the AI really, just set it to two player. Set your emulator to just be using the the same controller for port 1 and port 2, and just play with two player, you know? Just continue to practice either side. Um, if you just want to focus on a specific weapon, then I would recommend using this strategy of just remaining in one place and shooting. Because then that, that just becomes your so, your sole focus and you can use your exact position as the starting point to be like, okay, I'm at this distance, therefore let's see what I can do. So I don't have the mortar anymore and I can't collect any down here, so I'm going to just use an angle instead. Because why not? That looks okay, I think. That's just from... Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Again, just I don't mean to be so nonchalant about it, but sometimes it just feels right, you know? And that just comes down to muscle memory, which you'll gain over time if you continue to practice. So uh, let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. Get on the practice field, get on the battlefield, boys, and try and hit those 120 mortar shots. That was absolutely insane. And in the meantime, I'm going to bed. Good night, everyone.